All rise. May be seated. Okay. We're ready to proceed with Mr. Bernard. I'm here as uh, Ian Freeman today, just for the record. Okay, Ian. I have Ian Bernard in parentheses Freeman. So you, you prefer to be Ian Freeman? I would prefer Freeman to be Ian Freeman today, yeah. Okay. Now, uh, just for the record, uh, you filed a motion to dismiss on March 30th. I have denied that motion. Uh, nothing contained in that motion is applicable to this matter. Is that uh, for you clarification? You have also filed a, we're going to call it a motion for reconsideration. You have uh, entitled it Notice of Estoppel and Default Judgment, which starts off in my affidavit dated March 4, 2010. I made several unrebutted statements regarding my explicit lack of consent to your society and therefore its statutes and ordinances. I have denied this motion for reconsideration. So, stay ready to proceed. We are. Okay. Stay with call Linda Pizarro. Questions? Yeah, I I do have some questions uh, first. You 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 will have you will have a chance to uh, address the court right now. The state is ready. Right, right hand, face the judge. Right, right hand. Testimony about to give the matter. Ob object. I object. You always swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So, we got. I do, sir. Uh, to be seated, state your name for the record. Linda A. DeRusso. Excuse me, I object. Um, I have not been asked if I'm ready to proceed, and I have not been informed of the nature and cause of these proceedings, as in the... Yeah, well, I, I, I apologize for that. Uh, the complaint before me is for a expired parking meter. Okay, I have some questions about the nature and cause, because I'm not a lawyer and I don't okay. understand uh, what's going on. You have denied that you are obligated to pay this parking ticket. I haven't denied um, anything. As soon as the state finishes their testimony, you will have the right to cross-examine this witness, and then you will have the right to testify in your own behalf if you so choose. With all due respect, I'm not here to argue or deny. I have questions about the nature and cause of these proceedings before they proceed. So um, if you don't mind, I would like to, uh, to have those answered so I can... I'll let, I'll, 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 let you, I'll, let you, I'll let you start by asking question one. And if I decide after question one that your questions are irrelevant or immaterial, then we will proceed with this matter. So okay. will you be able to proceed without me uh, being informed to the nature and cause of these, these the, the proceedings? The nature, nature of this is that you were at a parking meter. Uh, well, there's, between there's, the hours of 8 a.m. and 5 p.m.? There's had, more to it had, than that. And that the time on that parking meter had expired. I, I see what you're saying. Um, my, my questions start with, uh, am I entitled to a fair hearing? And I'm looking for uh, responsive answers, so a yes or no will, uh, will be appropriate. I would hope that you're entitled to a fair hearing. You are in this, yes. in this society, even though you choose not to be part of it, Is you are innocent until proven guilty. Is that a yes to the question? I would say it was a yes. Okay. Uh, what are the consequences, if any, if you don't give me a fair and meaningful hearing? So you think that the, you haven't had a fair and meaningful hearing, uh, your recourse is to file a letter with the Judicial Conduct Committee. If it's determined that there has not been, if the committee determines that there hasn't been a, a fair, uh, meaningful hearing, then what would the consequences be for you? I would get some kind of a letter from them telling, telling me that uh, I did something wrong. Okay, I appreciate the information. Um, I have been charged with a, a crime. Is that correct? No. No. I don't, I, don't, I don't believe that a violation constitutes a crime. So this is not a criminal uh, criminal case? That's a violation. Okay. Um, so, does corpus delecti apply to uh, a violation? I don't know what context you're talking about. So uh, if this is not a criminal matter, is it a civil matter? No, it's a violation. I think believe that violations are treated as non-criminal violations. I don't have the statute in front of me, but I believe that's the way they're classified. Okay. So is it, uh, are you saying that there are other categories beyond criminal or civil that this court can hear? It's a violation, you're going to hear it. Now, if this is the nature of your questions, the state's going to proceed. 
Well, I, I have a lot of questions in you regards to the nature and the, the, the cause of these, uh, these issues here. I haven't, found any, I haven't heard any questions that I would say were germane to the issue at hand. Well, I was under the impression that this was a criminal case on the paperwork from the, the court. Uh, it's got the CR in the number, and I was, does that, that does not mean that uh, the CR does not stand for criminal? It may be docket as criminal. Okay. Well, just, just, just for your edification, let's, let's, let's read what the definition of violation is. Okay, sure. <coughs> okay, well, let's read right off here. The provisions of this section, and this is under classifi classification of crimes, the provisions of this section govern the classification of every offense, whether defined within this code or by any other statute. Every offense is either a felony, misdemeanor, or violation. Felonies and misdemeanors are crimes. I, a violation does not constitute a crime, and conviction of a violation does not give rise to any disability or legal disadvantage based on conviction of a criminal offense. Okay? So, a violation is a non-criminal offense. Okay, I see that. Uh, so, would your orders and judgments uh, in this case be valid if I don't get a fair hearing? Yes or no? Depends. Depends. Would you, uh, would you seek to enforce your orders and judgments if I don't get a fair hearing? I think we'll put a stop to this right now. State is going to proceed. Are you allowed to proceed without me understanding uh, the nature and cause you, of, these, of this I have, situation? I have told you what the nature is. If you are not a in any way limited so that you do not understand the plain English description that I have just given you, please tell me. Well, I, I see what you are saying, but I still I, have not hear, been informed. You hear what I am saying. Right, I, I hear what you're saying, but I have not been informed to my satisfaction of the uh, the entire the nature and the cause of these proceedings. What, what would it take? And I have questions. What, what would it take to satisfy you? The answers to my questions. And I've answered every question. There are more. Uh, tell you what we'll do. You've got them all written out there. I have a Why lot. Why don't you of give the bailiff the list of your questions? I will look at your questions, and if I decide well, that I any of those questions, have... and if I decide that any of those questions should be answered, I'll answer. If I decide that none of those questions are germane to these proceedings, we will proceed. I appreciate the offer. Um, my questions have my legal strategy and my notes. Um, plus, uh, I, I would uh, prefer to have these questions answered on the record. We are going to proceed. So, if you insist that uh, you know, I object to this uh, okay. because I, I've not been I, I've noted your objection, and I've told you that if you do not agree or you think you have been in any way prejudiced, or you do not think that I have afforded you an opportunity for a fair trial, then your recourse is to complain to the Judicial Conduct Committee. For, for the record, I We're not going to sit here for the next few hours listening to you have these questions, ask these questions, which are not germane to these proceedings. For the record, I take exception to that. And I these questions are entirely that, relevant. And I have told you what your recourse is. Proceed. Thank you. Would you please state your name and identify yourself for the record? Uh, my name is Linda A. DeRusso. And I work as a parking enforcement officer for the city of Pete. And how long have you been employed as a parking enforcement officer with the city of Pete? Uh, ten years, three months, and ten years. And um, what are your duties and obligations as a parking enforcement officer? To enforce the downtown area or greater Keene of any and all parking ordinance violations. And as a result of that, are you familiar with the parking ordinance uh, regulations for the city? Yes, sir. Directing your attention to November 14th of 2009 at approximately 11 a.m. Were you on duty? I was. That was a Saturday. Okay. So you recall it was a Saturday? Yes. Okay. And, and where were you uh, Where were you working at that time? At that time, I was on Railroad Street. That's off of Main and downtown. Okay. And... Um, what, if any, observations did you make uh, about a car parked uh, near Michelle's or Michelle's restaurant on Railroad Street? That would be the first metered space on Railroad Street on the north side, and there was a vehicle parked there, and it was expired, at which time I issued a violation for expired meter. Okay, and what was the registration of that meter? It was a Florida registration, and it was... Uh, 311 XBJ Florida. It was a maroon or red in color Subaru. 
May I approach your honor? Yes, you may. We sent you copies of these. You did. If I could have these marked as states 1A through 1D. For identification purposes. I have marked these four pictures for identification purposes. That does not mean that they have been entered as an exhibit. I show you what's been marked as exhibit uh, states exhibit 1A through 1D for identification purposes. Um, could you explain what these photographs depict? The first one I'm looking at is of a meter, which is a two hour duration. It's located on Railroad Street and it's on it is marked the number six, which means it's meter six. It's how I identify which space to be able to tell the exact location of violation. And just for time for a minute, is meter six the meter that this uh, vehicle from Florida uh, that you just described was parked at? Yes, sir. Okay. That's another ticket. And does the meter indicate uh, the hours of operation that the meter is required to be set? Yes, it does. In the second photo, it says hours of operation Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Um, I mean, Monday through Saturday, excuse me, 8 to 5. Okay. And um, does the third photo also depict um, the parking space? space? It, it does, and the fourth as well. Okay. And are those all fair and accurate uh, depictions of the meter and the space as it existed back on November uh, 14th, 2009? Same, yes. Same as exists today. Okay. Move to strike the ID and have the sports of insurance. Does Mr. Freeman have any objection? Can you uh, restate the, the uh, motion? To have, to have those four pictures which have been marked for identification to be entered as a full exhibit. May I take one, uh, one more look at the uh, prior to that? I object to the relevance of these uh, photos as there's no evidence of any uh, the alleged car uh, or anything having to do with me. They, they are not being introduced for the purpose of showing your car at the meter in question. Uh, they are being introduced solely for the purpose of showing the existence and location of the meter. And I will allow them to be entered as an exhibit. With regard to um, what is the process that you undertake when you see a car at a meter uh, and, and the meter is required to be fed and the meter is expired? Do you, you issue a ticket through a computer system or explain how that happens? Correct. It's electronic handheld computer system. The meter will flash zeros on the front where the coins are inserted. On the back, it'll be read and say expired. So I check both of those and then enter the plate number, the location, the meter number in the violation, which in this case was an expired meter. Okay, and did the lights indicate that the meter was working properly? Yes. Okay. Um, and then you uh, put the ticket in an orange envelope and put it on the windshield? On, right, behind the windshield wiper. Yeah. And then um, when is that ticket required to be paid under the city ordinance? Well, it's uh, 14 days, it goes up to 15 and 28 to 35, which in this violation is the maximum that it'll go up is 35. So if somebody pays that ticket within the 14 days, it's a $5 fine? Correct. And after that, it's, it 15 increases? 15 and then, yes, 35 at the max. Okay. And what happens with regard to notifying people who have received tickets uh, relative to tickets being passed due and, and how, how much they owe? They are notifications that are sent through the parking bureau office out of the police department to the address on the registration. Okay. And was that done in the case of Mr. Bernard? Yes. Objection. I'm here as Mr. Uh, Ian Freeman. Also received a copy of that. I did. And I ask that this be uh, marked for full exhibit. 
This state's exhibit number two. It's a uh, certified copy under seal from the state of Florida um, indicating the registration uh, of, the, of the vehicle. I object uh, that uh, particular document. Uh, that, that document is relevant to whether or not a car was parked illegally, but beyond that, it's not even in reference to the alleged Subaru. Not being introduced for the purpose of showing the car was legally parked, it's being introduced for the purpose of showing that this car was. If the court will observe. No, I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking at it. This, this, this is, shows a, a Toyota. For the record, uh, the court. Let me, let me read it first. Shows this registration was issued to you on uh, February 10th of this year for a Toyota. For the record, the uh, defendant has, or the uh, witness has already indicated that the uh, vehicle in question is a Subaru. Right. A Subaru with the same registration number that may or may not have been transferred from that Subaru to this Toyota. And your objection is that the state at this point uh, hasn't shown that uh, the registration that was on the Subaru in 2009 belonged to you. That's the nature of your objection, right? I'd say so. Okay. I will take your objection under advisement until I uh, hear the rest of the story. In the meantime, this is introduced as an exhibit. You ran the, the plate based on, or you got the information on Mr. Bernard based on how? Objection, I'm here as uh, Ian Freeman today. Mr. Bernard. For, for purpose of this, Ian Freeman is, Freeman is AKA Ian Bernard. I would okay. prefer if the uh, prosecutor would uh, use my current name. Okay. How did you get the information on uh, Mr. That would have been run through our office staff. Okay. And um, uh, then notices were sent out, is that correct? Yes. I have no further questions. Do you have any questions? I certainly do. Uh, what was your first name? Linda. Linda. Linda, um, do you have a copy of the, the ticket at, at hand? Can you have that? I do now. Great. Uh, is this ticket consistent with the New Hampshire Constitution? Objection. How is that relevant? Uh, well, I mean, it, does the Constitution apply to this uh, this court and these proceedings? I would hope so. Okay, so I would like to know that if the witness is aware of the ticket's compliance with the, uh, the Constitution. The question is beyond the, any knowledge of the you would expect this witness to have. Did, uh, Linda, did you swear an oath to the New Hampshire Constitution? Objection, relevance, sustained. Uh, no, no. I have to know if this uh, witness is an she actual. Has been, she has been properly sworn in before this court. Well, I, what, what I'm looking to understand, uh, to it know. Is her, it is her duty, after being sworn in, to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help her God. I, I, I get what you're saying there, and I appreciate that. Um, but but in order to know that this is indeed a uh, legitimate officer of the uh, the Keene Police, I, I would think, need to. I will you. take I will take judicial notice that she is sworn in. She is a Keene Police officer, and that she is an officer of this court. Are you taking judicial notice that she has sworn an oath to the Constitution? Yes. So Can you <laughs> that, if that will enable us to move on. <clears throat> Oh, I, I have, we'll definitely move on. Would you say, uh, Linda, that the actions that you've taken in this case uh, in regards to issuing this ticket are consistent with your oath to the New Hampshire Constitution? Objection, Your Honor, why don't, why don't you ask her if the actions that she has taken are consistent with her training as a parking enforcement officer. 
Well, it's my it's my understanding that the uh, the New Hampshire Constitution, if I may submit the uh, New Hampshire Constitution's Bill of Rights, uh, does that need to be submitted or is it just taken as you know, part we'll of the notice, proceedings? Yeah. Uh, Article one, just for the record, Article one, uh, equality of men, origin, and object of government. All men are born equally free and independent. Therefore, all government of right originates from the people, is founded in consent, and instituted for the general good. Article two, natural rights. All men we have. Will, we, we 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 will take. Judicial notice, the state of New Hampshire has adopted the Bill of Rights. Just for the record, Article 2, natural rights, all men have certain natural, essential, and inherent rights, among which are the enjoying and defending Mr. of... Mr. Freeman, if, if you are attempting to delay the proceedings of this court... Not at all. I'm just reading Article 2 into the record, and then I'll be done reading the... You can, you can introduce it as an exhibit. You do not need to read it into this... Right. I've got one for the half a sentence remaining. So for, for the record, uh, acquiring, possessing, and protecting property, and in a word, seeking and obtaining happiness. Uh, considering that, Linda, how is it that uh, issuing tickets like this is compliant with uh, the intent of and, the New Hampshire government? I will government? objection on her, on her behalf to the question as being out of order. Linda, if the ticket wasn't consistent with the New Hampshire Constitution, would it be a valid ticket? Objection. Relevant. It's not relevant. Can you answer the, the question? Answer next question. Would there be a crime if there was no ordinance, Linda? We've already decided that you have not been charged with a crime. Would there be a violation, excuse me, uh, if there was no ordinance? If there wasn't an ordinance? If there was no ordinance, no city of Keene ordinance, uh, that you cited, would there be a, uh, a violation? No, because there would not be a meter there. So, uh, would you say that I caused damage? Objection, relevance, sustained. Did I violate anyone's legal rights? Uh, and you have accused me of violating a Keene City Ordinance number 94152? And do you believe I did violate that ordinance? I do. And would you say that the ordinance is applicable to me? It's your vehicle. Uh, that's not a responsive answer, a motion to strike that. The, the answer to the question is yes. The well, ordinance applies to you. I would like her to answer the, uh, the question is, uh, is the ordinance applicable to me? Okay, is that an arbitrary opinion? Objection, relevance, sustained. Is uh, your statement that this, the ordinance is applicable to me based on facts within your, uh, currently within your knowledge? It's based on facts. And uh, can you tell me factually what is an ordinance? Objection. Uh, this is incredibly relevant because uh, the allegation here is that she has alleged that I have violated this ordinance, and so if she doesn't know what an ordinance is, then how would she know whether I violated it? Move on to the next question. Uh, for the record, I take exception to uh, that. Do you have, uh, Linda? Do you have facts currently within your, in, with currently within your knowledge to prove when, where, why, and how this ordinance actually became applicable to me? Objection. Relevance sustained. The uh, relevance is that the again uh, the allegation second, is that the second. if you think that this ordinance was not properly passed by the city no, council, not the it. city of Keene, that really is up to you mm -hmm. to raise that as a defense. That's not my it's not, it's not up to her. I, uh, I have the presumption of inno innocence and I'm, I would like the state to be able to or the whoever to prove that this ordinance is applicable to me that has yet to have been uh, made clear in this in this instance I'm not challenging the validity of your ordinance within your society I'm sure it's entirely valid but uh, I'd like to know exactly the facts of how this became applicable to me, these ordinances, all of them. 
if you were going to raise that issue, that is something that you needed to do through discovery prior to this proceeding. Well, I, I filed an affidavit uh, making the statement, the claim that they do not apply to me, and invited the alleged uh, plaintiff to respond with proof that they do apply, and they refuse to respond. I, I have sustained the objection. Next question. I'll take exception to that. Uh, let's see. What authority have you been granted, Linda, by the, uh, the state government, uh, the state law, to enforce parking ordinances? Objection. She has testified that she is a parking enforcement officer engaged by the city of King. Is uh, enforcing parking uh, meters one of the uh, explicit things that the New Hampshire Constitution has granted municipalities to be able to, uh, to do? Objection sustained. Where does your authority come from, Linda? Objection. Sustained. This is, uh, goes straight to the nature and uh, cause of these uh, proceedings, which the, I still the, don't the understand. Is, the issue before me is whether or not you own a Subaru with that license plate that was parked at that meter in November of last year. That's the issue before me. The issue before... Frankly, I'm not sure that the city of Keene has proven that, but... Okay. So you're, well, the you're, issue, you're going at this in the wrong direction. The, I see where you're coming from. The issue before me is trying to comprehend, as a non-lawyer who doesn't understand these proceedings, what the nature and cause of uh, all of this is, including the issue of jurisdiction. Is it uh, your position that... I, it's my position that this court has jurisdiction over this matter, and that the nature of One these moment. proceedings has been made eminently clear to you, is it your opinion that uh, you have, uh, that, excuse me, is your opinion you have jurisdiction arbitrary? Absolutely not. So it's based on facts currently within your knowledge? Do you have any more questions of this witness, or would you like me to just take this matter under advisement? I would, I would like to get, yeah, I'd move to, to strike that as non-responsive. I, I do have a few more questions, but now we are addressing the issue Do you have any, do you have any questions that are relevant to this? If you have no more is questions jurisdiction relevant? that are relevant to this matter, I am going to dismiss this witness. The state's case will be rested. You are going to have a chance to testify in your own behalf. Is it the court's position that jurisdiction is not relevant to uh, these proceedings? I think jurisdiction is very relevant, and I've already told you that this court has jurisdiction over this matter. And you have assumed that jurisdiction uh, exists? I am not assuming anything. It's not what facts are you facing? It, just a second. Do you have any more questions that are relevant to this matter? If not, will we this witness to, will be dismissed. I will have some questions. Will we be able you, to address you have jurisdiction any, do you have any afterwards? questions right now? Yes. Then you ask them. Will we be able to address jurisdiction after she's done? Because I'm happy to let her I've go. Already, I've already told you this court has jurisdiction. If you want to take an appeal saying this court does not have jurisdiction, that's your right. I would, uh, I would request that after we're done, uh, with her, the court uh, show the facts of uh, how jurisdiction was created over me. So you, you asked the question. If you have more questions, next question. Then, do you have, have a, Linda, do you have a chance to testify? As a parking enforcement officer, do you have a quota? No, I do not. If you uh, would, you have a job if you decided that you were no longer going to write uh, parking tickets. Objection. Sustained. Um, no further questions. Okay. Do you have any further questions? No we'll redirect. Okay, you may step down. I do have additional evidence, Your Honor. Okay. This is a certified copy of the city ordinance in question. <coughs> Under seal. This is the book. This is. So, just. Mark, have, have you shown a copy of this? To, uh, I would like to, been, I would like to see it at this time. He has been provided a copy of this already? Okay. Not, they the have whole, not the me. whole book. But no, but the, the, the ordinance pertaining to parking meters. Correct. Is this 1152? Uh, one, one one yeah. And it was section uh, 2. Section two. It's B 1152. I uh, object to these ordinances as they have yet to been proven to have any applicability to me. I just ask that it be marked as, oh, 
this is certified copy of the whole code. I just ask that it be taken as exhibit, state's exhibit number three. I will take it as an exhibit. I won't mark it. I'll give it back to you on mark. I, I, have, I have a question of the state. In November of 2009, we have a Florida registration that was fixed to a maroon Subaru. We have evidence that's been submitted that in February of 2010, this same registration was affixed to a 1996 Toyota. Is there any evidence of what happened between November 14th and February 10th regarding this registration? Is the state the state asked for the certified copies from Florida, and that is what Florida provided us. Do we have any evidence? No. I, I mean, obviously, what happened is Mr. Bernard. It's the state's right. contention that he. But there is certain traded yeah. cars and there is certain objection that is speculation the next. The is, there any, is there any evidence of that? The evidence was presented by, uh, by uh, Ms. Desiru, who said that the process is she takes down the plate number, they then run the plate at the time that it existed, and it came back registered to Mr. Bernard. That's the evidence, coupled with the, the evidence from the state of Florida that that same, same plate number. Is still associated and previously with been it. affixed to, an, to another vehicle. Right. I object to speculation. Right. Now, do you wish to come up here and testify on your own behalf? I don't really have anything to say, as I still don't understand the nature and the cause okay. of these proceedings. If you have nothing further to say, then I will take this matter under advisement. All, All right. All right. For the record, the uh, registration was not entered into evidence. And uh, for the record, I appreciate your uh, calm demeanor. Okay, sir.